the age I am, I'm 54, um, and I've always written about women, um, and kind of women a little bit younger than me. And why is that? Why do you? Why? Because I'm immature. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't like. I'm, I'm 54. I don't really feel it. I think, well, especially kind of our generation don't. We feel a lot like we are not the same kind of version. I am not the same version of 54 that my mother was, for example. What inspired me to write this book, The Break? Okay, I wondered kind of what was going on in marriages, you know, for people in their mid-40s. And a lot has been written about midlife crises. And I find that most of them are written in a very uncompassionate way, that the person who is having the crisis, and it's usually a man, um, he is depicted as like a complete idiot who has no self-awareness and no sense of kind of loyalty to his long-term partner. And I wanted to write about a long-term relationship that is going through difficulties, but I wanted to write about it in a nuanced way, in a compassionate way, because, you know, the man wants a six-month break in, in my book. You know, his dad has died, and then a close friend of his has died. He has been, like, impacted, like, on a cellular level by, you know, kind of sudden knowledge of his own mortality. And he still loves his wife. He spends 13 months in torment trying to find various ways to get through it. It's a very real thing, the whole idea of a marriage sabbatical. And it is because we're living so much longer. You know, that people are in love and they want to be with that person for a long time, but they're looking at maybe another 50 years without variety. And some marriage sabbaticals are fairly benign in that, you know, the person takes time off to, to travel or to, to learn something that they always wanted to do and just didn't have the opportunity to do when they were younger. And some of them are less benign, you know, in that they are sexual sabbaticals. I hadn't heard about any people I knew doing it while, when I started writing the book. But by the end of the book, I had heard about people. So I think it has become a syndrome you know, a response to the fact that we are living to be much longer, much older. Yeah. Do you think that this is a trend that's emerging amongst older married couples? Well, the funny thing is, um, there's a phenomenon called the silver splitters, which is like usually people in their 60s where, you know, they've been married a long time um, and their kids leave home and suddenly they find that they have nothing in common any longer. And I suppose back... Without the children there. Without the children there, yeah. That they had become sort of almost co-workers with their, you know, taking care of their children. And I mean, I think it's wonderful that people are able in their 60s to say, this isn't working anymore. I want to try finding love with somebody new. Because back maybe even 30 years ago, you're in your 60s, you're, you think people sh just should stick it out. They're sort of expected to stick it out. But like, you know, we're living longer, we're healthier, um, we've got more appetite for life. So the silver splitters is a different phenomenon to what I'm writing about. Um, but yeah, I think definitely people are going to revisit their, their or recalibrate their idea of a long-term relationship. I started writing novels out of the blue in 1994. I was 30. I had no background, I had no history. You know, I, I was a law graduate. My era was defined as post-feminist, which meant that I had been told, you know, that the war is over, women are equal, you know, opportunities are for women are the same as the opportunities for men. I was living in London and I was working in a badly paid job um, and I had no kind of idea or expectation of a career. And so there was this enormous gap between what I was told the world was and how I was living it. And there was nothing in popular fiction 
about women living my life. So I suppose I found my voice with my first book, which was Watermelon. I was sharing a flat with two other girls, you know, we spent our electricity money on shoes, you know, like we had a lot of fun. And I thought, I'm going to write a book about a woman like me, a woman who lives a messy life, um, a woman who makes mistakes, a woman who has disastrous relationships with men um, and who isn't sure if she's allowed to admit to that because, you know, the whole post-feminist message was very confusing. But I want to write books that women can read and go, thank God it's not just me. My characters are always imperfect, like they're always flawed um, and they behave sometimes quite badly and in, a, in many ways they behave very well. Um, but I write about the issues that impact on women's lives, you know, like relationship abuse, rape, um, addiction. Um, like, I mean, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I'm very open about that. I always thought like an alcoholic was like somebody, you know, like a filthy man, you know, in a raincoat, drinking out of a paper bag in public. And by me creating characters who were, you know, young women like who, yeah, had jobs and had flatmates and still had the infrastructure of a middle class life, it, it enabled other women to go, oh, great, thank you, that's me too. So, yeah, I've always considered it my duty to tell stories about women's issues, um, about ordinary women going through the stuff that has always been kind of shunted aside and regarded as something that happens to other people. You know, we are the other people. <laughs>